Hi, you're on Bible Answers. Yeah, good, good evening, Pastor Don. Um, I, one of the mainline Protestant churches uh, in this area started preaching anonymous Christianity uh, or inclusional Christianity. Uh, could you um, give us your thoughts on that? Could you help me um, and and define that for me a little bit? Okay. Um, that there's salvation outside of Christ. That if you... Um, and Romans uh, 2, uh, 12 through 15, it talks about what happens for people who haven't heard the gospel or... Um, you know, are you know excluded from the their by their cultural background and stuff like that from understanding the gospel. Um, I, I have some real issues with um, anonymous Christianity. It's, it's preached uh, in the Catholic Church um, since the second, um, or since uh, JP to John Paul II, uh, Vatican II was, came out, and the current Pope. Also, it has written an encyclical um, backing the thought up that you can find salvation outside of Christ by uh, obedience to the Spirit that is within all men. Okay, and they use um, and they use Romans uh, two uh, eleven through fifteen to back it up. It's like twelve through fifteen. I see it. I, I see how they can do it. Uh, yeah, I would love to talk to you yeah, about I'm that. I'm going to hang up and let you speak to it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Nope. How'd that go? All right. I'm going to answer this question. Anonymous Christianity, I guess, is what it's called. Let's go ahead and uh, let's look at the quote unquote proof text that they use, and then let's talk about this. It is interesting. The question is, can someone get to heaven other than through faith in Christ alone? About mm, 10 years ago, I was startled to find out that um, Time Magazine, I believe it was Time, it was either Time or Newsweek, did a poll that discovered that um, I think it was 62% of folks that call themselves Bible-believing evangelicals believe that there is a way that it is possible to get to heaven through some other way than faith in Christ alone. I have heard people refer to this uh, Romans 2 passage as an, an alleged proof text. Let me uh, go ahead and read this passage, and then we'll go ahead and see what the Bible actually says. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law, or without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law or a law to themselves, which show the work of the law written in their heart and their conscience, also bearing witness in their thoughts, meanwhile, accusing or ex else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Okay. So then the question is, does that mean that the Gentiles, or the folks that have not been exposed to the Bible, you know, like the, the um, uh, caller said, through uh, their culture or whatever, they have not been exposed to the Bible. Does that mean then that because they do by nature the things in the Bible, that they can then get to heaven? Well, first of all, we need to understand that nobody gets to heaven by being good. Sure. One of the great arguments for the existence of God is the imprint of God in every man's heart um, throughout uh, the world. Man is not perfect toward God, no. And man is a sinner, yes. And one sins enough to send him to hell. But 
Yeah, there is an imprint of uh, God in men's hearts. That, by the way, is one of the reasons, and we may be able to talk about this later, one of the reasons why this abominable doctrine of Calvinism is wrong. This idea of total depravity, meaning uh, total inability, can't be because there is an imprint of, of um, God consciousness in everybody. But I'll get off the subject if I go on that right now. How is man condemned? Well, John is really plain. The Bible says in John chapter 3, and, and this, I guess, is what we've got to figure out. What sends a man to hell? He that believeth, this is John chapter 3 and verse 18. He that believeth on him, talking about Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not hath, uh, is condemned already. Why? Watch now. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John chapter 3 and verse 33. He that... Um, I'm sorry. Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now I want you to uh, get a few things. This idea from Romans twelve, uh, Romans 2, if you understand uh, the outline of Romans, Paul is trying to make a point in Romans 1, 18 through 320, and that is, everybody's a sinner. When he got off a little bit here about the Gentiles doing by nature the things in the law, he was doing that to say, guys, it's not a big deal that you actually keep some external laws. Um, and you're proud of that, Gentiles who don't even know they're supposed to do keep some of those external laws, yet they're condemned. you got to keep reading the rest of the passage. So, the thing is, according to the Bible, all men have sinned, therefore all men have, are condemned, therefore there is something that has to be done to fix the sin problem. You see, the Bible is unique in that... It, um, Every other religion teaches if you have sin, you add good to bad, and hopefully eventually your bad becomes good. But nature itself teaches that that can't happen. You add a hundred good apples to one bad apple, and you'll have a hundred bad apples eventually. But those good apples won't make that bad apple good. The Bible tells us that um, sin is like leaven. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little yeast makes the whole lump uh, um uh, fermented. So, watch. Now, I want you to understand this. The only solution for sin is that someone would pay the price. The only one that paid the price was Jesus Christ. The Bible says God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were at sinners, Christ died for us. Now, listen to me. Buddha didn't die for us. Muhammad didn't die for us. Ari Krishna didn't die for us. And Jesus Christ is the only one that rose again. So look at to say, well, you know what? Let's let's be all inclusive. Hey, anybody can believe anything that they want to, but salvation can only come from the guy who paid for it. And there's only one guy who paid for it, and that's Jesus. Now you might feel better to say, well, that that means that a bunch of people are going to go to hell. Listen, I didn't write the book. But yeah, you know what? We need to get our minds around the fact that yes, it is Jesus Christ who is the Savior of the world. And if you believe in Jesus, you get to go to heaven. If you don't, you don't get to go to heaven and that's the way it works. Here is just a couple of things. People say, well, that's crazy. Jesus never claimed to be the Savior of the world. And that's where you're wrong. John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, he didn't say by me and 
Hare Krishna, by me and Buddha, by me and Muhammad. No, he didn't do that. He said, if you're going to get to heaven, it's got to be through me. Acts chapter 4. Peter is preaching. And he's preaching to Jews who just rejected Jesus. And they had just done a, a miracle and healed a guy. Now remember, Jesus has already ascended into heaven and they want to know, how'd you do this miracle? I thought we got rid of Jesus. And in answering it, he said this, Be it known unto you all and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Watch now, watch, I'm still reading the Bible, watch this. Neither, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Guys, listen to me. It's so important. This anonymous uh, Christianity or anonymous uh, salvation where it doesn't matter. Just turn your, turn your will and your way over God as you understand Him. That's not Bible. That's a counterfeit gospel. The true gospel is believing that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again for our sins. That's the gospel. The gospel is specific. The gospel has a name. There's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. What does it say? One more time. None other what? None other name. Yeah, it does matter who you call your God. Yeah, it does matter who you call your higher power. Listen, it may be fashionable and it may uh, get a lot of, uh, of the theological types uh, to feel better about things, but it is not Bible. I hope I've answered your question.